All right. So early this morning, the Falconers of Nigeria played in their first match of the FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup. The team took on Korea Republic and it ended with the Falconers picking up their first win of the competition. So congratulations, congratulations to them. Now, it definitely wasn't pretty, if I'm being honest. Not a pretty performance from the Falconers, but they did manage to find a way to get the job done, which is also commendable. Now, before we get into more details about the match, which include a player rating at the end, Please don't forget to like this video and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you very much. So yeah, the Falconers of Nigeria took on Korea Republic or South Korea in the first match of their FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup campaign. The game ended one goal to nil in favor of the Falconers. Goal scored by Floyd Sebastian same player who scored the first goal for the Falconers at the previous World Cup that was against France now this one right here against Korea Republic now to start the game the Falconers looked pretty bad uh, maybe it was just the first game jitters but it looked real bad uh, those first at least 20-25 minutes uh, we were not even putting together passes we could not hold on to the ball we were looking crazy going forward um, luckily defensively we were solid pretty much throughout the game but we had to pick up later on in the game probably 30 minute mark where we're looking a little bit more lively we did have a chance for Mary Ongba, uh, Mary Lucky Ongba, which um she gives the ball to Rofia. Rofia drops it back to her. She shoots it. She's in the box. It was a pretty good opportunity, but she didn't get the ball on target. And speaking of off target, the best chance or the closest opportunity of the game in the first half went to the Korea Republic. They hit the Warworks right at the end of the first half. A nicely taken free kick that crashed into the crossbar had the goalkeeper beat. But luckily for the Falconers, they went into halftime still at 0-0. And then you come into the second half, and I felt like we were much improved in the second half. Early, you had a chance to marry a bot in the box that she strikes and takes off target. Then you got around the 50-minute mark, Rofia de Moran getting the ball to Flores Sebastian. She actually had the ball from the beginning, gave it to Rofia de Moran, who dropped it back to her. She shoots it almost like what happened in the first half but this time there was a block made speaking of blocks you go to the 70th minute of the match Aminabello had a shot that looked like it was going on target but a nice block by the South Korean player to uh, take it away from goal and then second half substitute Chiamakao Kuchuku came into the game and added a little bit more life to it had a big chance in the 74th minute of the game he gets past two defenders, smacks it, look real close. Goalkeeper made a fantastic save right there and um, to keep it, of course, at 0-0. Then you get to the big moment of the match. Two substitutes connected. Chiamaka Okuchuku got the ball to uh, goodness or Sigue. She shoots it and is blocked, taken away by the Korean player. But her pass out goes straight to goodness or Sigue. She touches it a couple times. Drops the ball off for Floyd Sebastian. Now we get to the part. Was it a cross or was it a shot? Funny enough, I just did highlights of um, Asisa Doshwala's game against Nicole Payne. And Nicole Payne had a ball exactly like this. The only difference is it didn't go in the back of the net. The same from basically the same area. Puts the ball in the box and it goes up the woodwork. Hers was cleared off the line. This one goes into the back of the net. Obviously, I'm gonna say it was a shot, but it is what it is. Ball goes into the back of the net. Falconers take a 1-0 lead against Korea Republic, and it honestly should have been two when it got to the first minute of added time. You had some great work by Chiamaka Okuchuku to get to a ball and give it to goodness Osigwe, and um, she takes the responsibility on herself to take the shot but she just cannot keep it on target. I felt like it was a good one from goodness on Sigwe. I know a lot of people are gonna say that was selfish or whatnot. First of all, I feel she has the quality to finish that type of chance. 
And second of all, we all know in these type of games, when you make those type of passes, it's not 100%. You're not telling me that you can guarantee that her pass would reach, would reach uh, Chiamaka Okuchuku and she would finish it. You can't guarantee that. So you just got to take what you got right there. But luckily for the Falconers, the miss did not come back to hunt them. And they ended up winning the game by a goal to nil. Now, the win puts the Falconers in second position on their group table. Of course, they're in Group D alongside Germany, South Korea, and Venezuela. Germany topped the group by way of goal difference. They scored five goals and conceded two against Venezuela. So that's three plus three goal difference. While we have plus one, obviously, from a 1-0 win against South Korea. The next match for the Falconers will be played this Wednesday, the 4th of September, 11 p.m. Nigerian time. The game is going to be hosted at the Estadio Metropolitano de Techo in Bogota, Colombia. Same stadium that hosted this game. We just finished um, going through the South Korea versus Nigeria game. Now, moving on to the player ratings. And we're going to be rating the players on a scale of 1 to 10. 10 being the highest, 1 being the lowest. We're going to start with the goalkeeper, Shukurat Bakare. She started the game against the Korea Republic. And I'm going to rate her a 4.5 out of 10. I felt like there was not that much work to do. But when there was, she kind of made it a little bit harder than it should have been. I mean, she basically looked nervous for a whole 90 minutes. Anytime an aerial ball came in the box, um, there was a scare in my heart, like what's really gonna happen right here? Cause you were not sure. Her punches were not on point. Um, there was one that she just, she got the ball. She clearly punched it, but it just didn't move. It just dropped. So it's a lot to work on when it comes to Shakura Bakare. Hopefully she gets better as the competition keeps going. But for this match right here, 4.5 is the range that I'm going to be giving her. Now, moving on, and we're going to go to the central defenders. Shukurat Oladipo started the game and played 90 minutes for the Falconers. Uh, my rating for her is a 6.5 out of 10. Of course, the defense was a big part of the team keeping the clean sheet. But at the same time, I felt like I saw a couple of little Nikki errors made by her, little misjudged balls and things like that. That's why I'm going with a 6.5 for Shukurat, who's normally the best central defender on the team. I must say that, though. Then next up, of course, the second central defender. You got Comfort for Lauren Shaw. And I'm going to give Comfort a 7 out of 10. I felt like she was pretty spot on all day. Defending was on point. Uh, passing out of the back was also on point. Not too many mistakes on her side of the ball. So I'm going to go with a 7 and come for Lauren Shaw's case. Then we're going to move to the fullbacks. And we're going to start with Jumo Kealani. Jumo Kealani, I'm going to give her 6.5. She played as a right back on the day. She was pretty solid defensively. But I feel like she could do way more when it comes to the attack. And then you get to the left back of the team, Oluchi Ohayabulem. I'm going to give her a 5.5 out of 10. I felt like she just was all over the place at times and the game gave away way too many fouls. She was lucky to end the match still on the pitch to be honest and her passing which is normally really reliable was not reliable on the day. So it was like a lot of stuff that went wrong on the day for Lucio Haibulem. So I'm going to give her a 5 out of 10. And then you move to the midfield. And we're going to start with Adu Yena. I'm going to give her a 6.5 out of 10. First of all, she was playing in an unfamiliar position. She's normally like a box-to-box -box type midfielder. They had her more of a defensive midfielder in this game. She still did her thing. She was still like the most influential midfielder out of the bunch. So we're going to go with a 6.5 out of 10 for her. And next, you got Choma Olise. And I'm going to give her a 6 out of 10 for this game right here. I felt like the first half really did a lot of people bad. Um... The midfield definitely has to take a lot of blame for what we saw in the first half. And um, Choma Oli said she did come into the game in the second half. Looked much, much better in the second half. But at the end, I feel like a 6 out of 10 is um, 
probably just about right for Jomao Lucia in this game right here. Uh, just like Amin Abello, I'm going to give Amin Abello a 6 out of 10. I felt like she was lively in the game. I felt like she did a lot of things right. Um, her, the position that they had her at, she's not like an attacking midfielder. She's more of a supporting striker. But at the end, I felt like she did well enough in that position. So we're going to give her a 6 out of 10. And then we move up to the strike department. This graphic right here is definitely wrong. Rofieri Moran played on the left side of the attack. Lucky and Quai played in the middle. Floyd Sebastian on the right. We're going to start with Rofieri Moran. And I'm going to give Rofieri a 6.5 out of 10. I mean, she created the most chances in this game. So that's got to be worth something. Now, my main issue with her performance was that she wasn't aggressive enough. I mean, you see some balls that they passed to her that... If she put a little bit more effort, she could have reached and she just allows it to go. But outside of that, when the ball did get into her feet, I mean, it was like she played some good football. I really appreciated the game she played. Uh, her balls in the box were real good. Her little touch passes to her teammates were real good. She looked real professional in the performance, in my opinion. And then you move on to Mary Lucky and Bye. The 16 year old got the star for the team at the striker position and I'm going to give her a 6 out of 10. I felt like she got herself in some good positions. She's a strong player. Um, her finishing needs to be worked on, but she got herself in those positions. You know, she got herself in the box with, with a chance to put the ball in the back of the net, but just could not get the job done at the end. So we're going to go with a 6 out of 10 for Mary Lucky and Bob. And last but not least of the players in the star lineup, Floyd Sebastian. I felt like she was the best player on the pitch all day. And um, we're going to give her a 7.5, rightly so. I mean, you take a look at the beginning of the game, the first 20 minutes, what was she doing? She fights for the ball, wins it, pushes forward with it, passes it to somebody else who messes up. Then she got to come back and do it again. And guess what? She came back and did it again. Came back, did it again. That was what she was doing the whole first half, second half. Just really cleaning up other people's mistakes. She tracked back beautifully in the whole game. I mean, her tracking back, you got to really give her credit for that. So definitely a deserved 7.5 score right there. Now, moving on to the bench. Two substitutes were used in this game. Chiamaka Okuchuku and goodness Osigwe came into the game for the Falconers. First, you got Chiamaka Okuchuku, and I'm going to give her a 6.5 out of 10. I felt like she was really good when she came in. She gave us what we needed at that point in the game. I mean, I know she didn't score or assist in the game, but I'm not sure we win that game if Chiamaka Okuchuku wasn't in there. And on a better day, she could have really had two goals in this game. She had the one move where she skipped past two players, shot it, goalkeeper makes a fine save. Then, closer to the end, goodness Osigwe has the opportunity to pass the ball back to her, but goodness Osigwe shoots it, which I still feel it was a good shot from goodness Osigwe. But either way it goes, 6.5 out of 10, I don't feel that that's a bad score right there. And then you got the final player who came in for the Falconers, goodness Osigwe, we just talked about her. I'm going to give her a 6.5 out of 10. She got the assist for the match winning goal. So that right there is a lot of points. Did have that opportunity late in the game that I talked about. Could have squared the ball for uh, Chiamaka Okuchuku. But took the responsibility on herself. Missed it at the end. But I felt like she was lively in a time in the game. Definitely would not win this game without her. So a 6.5 out of 10 in my humble opinion is deserved and then we get to the head coach of the team the gaffer chris donjuma and i'm gonna give him a 5.5 out of 10 really if the team didn't get the win at the end of the day we're looking at a 4 or 3.5 out of 10 i mean you look at the first half you don't even know who you were watching is that nigeria we were watching in the first half or was that somebody else 
because we don't even understand what we were looking at. The midfield, we already knew these questions were up there. We knew that you need a defensive midfielder. The whole Nigeria knows you need a defensive midfielder in this team, but you choose not to even select your own club player. So we got to ask, what's the issue with the coach and she and Ray Kalu? Because there's no reason why she shouldn't be in this competition. Even if you could tell me, oh, well, we're going to work something out with the starters. She should be on the bench because you don't have any other options. And the game, the game clearly showed you that that you don't have any other options at that position. Then you look at the goalkeeping position. Come on now. If you're telling me that's the best we have, I don't know how far we're going to get in this competition. Or if you're telling me that she's not going to improve, I don't know how far we're going to get in this competition. This is a player that plays for the coach's club side, and he brings her in the national team, and we look at what she's doing. Come on now. She shouldn't even be starting for your club, talk less of the national team, if she's playing like that. So it's really inexplicable some of the things we're seeing. And I hope the coach comes to a senses because when you start playing those higher echelon teams, all these little things that you're doing, all these little errors that you're making, you're not going to get away with them when you get to be playing the better teams in these competitions. So he needs to get his act right and get things together with this team right here. Now, let me know your thoughts on this ratings. Of course, we're not going to always agree on everything. So I'm expecting a lot of people to be like, this is wrong, this is wrong, or this is right, this is right. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section on this right here. And also, please don't forget to like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank y'all for watching. Peace.